All right, happy Tuesday. Uh, I wanted to talk about why I love and why I hate classical guitar. I shouldn't say hate. Hate is too strong of a word when I'm scared, you know what, list of classical guitar. Um, yeah, so let's talk a little bit about, about when I first heard classical guitar being played. Like many of you guys, I grew up um, listening to classic rock. That's how I fell in love with the guitar, before jazz, before anything like that. It was, you know, the Hendrix, um, Cream, Led Zeppelin, The Who, um, all of that stuff. So I just loved it. You know, male testosterone, the whole nine yards. I just loved rock and roll music. And the guitar was just beautiful to me. And the whole notion of being a rock star, that kind of stuff. So that's like the first entryway into um, guitaristic music. Um, thereafter, I heard fingerstyle guitar. What happened was, I grew up a little bit during a little bit of the punk rock revolution, right? I got the tail end of CBGBs, for those of you who know CBGBs out in New York, so you can kind of figure my age just by that one. So, I got the tail end of CBGBs and punk rock, and I was at a concert, um, and it was like thrash metal, believe it or not, with distortion, and this was around the time, a little bit after, um, I don't know, the Clash, Rock the Casbah, all of that stuff. And um, during the intermission of a concert, if you could call it that, that I was in, this the bass player got out a uh, classical guitar and started playing this stuff. And I was like, whoa, I had never seen a guitar played that way. Um, the short end of it is that he was playing um, box beret on the guitar. I did not know you could play a melody, a bass line, you know, treble, all that stuff all at once. I didn't know who Chad Atkins was. I didn't know who Andre Segovia was. I was just fascinated by it. So I talked to him and he said he had studied, you know, classical piano and his parents forced him to take classical guitar lesson. And I said, oh, classical guitar. I never even really heard of classical guitar. I associated nylon string with the Spanish guitar. And so I just started, oh, it's the Spanish guitar. I didn't know if there was this whole pedagogy and then this whole notion of playing classical music. Um, rearranged for the guitar. I didn't know Segovia um, and all of the, the, the rich heritage of that stuff. So, he came fascinated with it, um, started scouring um, any books, anything I could find about it, and then, um, you know, I became really, really fascinated by it. Bought records, um, listened to, uh, yeah, yes, records. It wasn't YouTube. I didn't go on YouTube and start Googling people, put it that way. I actually went to a thing called Tower Records, for those of you. Um, um, depending on your age or that, that sense. And so I bought records, listened to things, and really got heavily involved in just trying to understand classical guitar. I bought a Mel Bay book, Complete Classical Guitar Method, and would look through it and schlep through it. Never, didn't have the money to go take lessons or anything like that, and thought I could figure out some things on my own and things of that nature. Anyway, long-winded way of saying what do I love about it and what did I, uh, do I hate about it. I love the structure of classical guitar, of classical music, period. One of the problems with like learning to play the guitar, there's a tendency to be all over the place. It's not very structured. Um, you learn some pentatonic um, you know, scales and to jam and blues in A or blues in G, C and things of that nature. And you're just going these, through these five notes and learning a one, four, five type stuff. So, and the other thing is if you don't have a good uh, voice, um, you know, you can accompany somebody who has a good voice and you can learn a Beatles song and kind of strum it and play the folk type things. Classical guitar in and of itself, it's a whole orchestra. It's like a piano. Um, you're playing, again, like I said, the melody line, the bass line, all of that stuff, counterpoint and stuff. So it's a mini orchestra. It's beautiful. It sounds full. It sounds complete. It sounds like you don't need anything else. In fact, I prefer to listen to solo classical guitarists rather than duos and trios and you know quartets and things like that. That's just me personally. I love it. It's like watching them that. So that's the turn on about that. It's a complete music within this one beautiful instrument. Doesn't matter. It doesn't have to be loud or flashy. I love that. The second thing about I love about it is technique wise. Um, I love structure and I love to learn things that are technical. Even though I love jazz and jazz is free improvisation to a certain extent. I love technique. Okay. Because tech, I want to be a musician but I do want to be a technician at times. And when you start um, learning some classical technique, it's like you're lifting weights, man. Okay, 
once you start the PIMA and the exercises and the etudes and things like that, you're lifting weights, you're learning technique, and you're, 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 you're doing things, and you can see yourself progress. So it's like an athlete. So when you start working out, uh, for those of us who are athletes, you know, you do your push-ups, you do your sit-ups, you lift weights, you run, you go, get in the pool, the backhands, whatever that the sport is. Uh, and you find yourself getting better through constant practice, practice, practice. That's why I end up all these videos with practice, practice, practice. So I love that. So again, I love the completeness of the instrument. I love the technical aspect of the instrument. Um, the third thing I like about it is it connects you with history. That's one of the things I love about jazz, too, right? Don't get me wrong. It's not like I don't like contemporary music and things like that. Um, I just, I love history. Call me a nerd or whatever you want to call it. I love knowing that I'm playing a piece of music that somebody played hundreds of years ago. Or I'm playing a piece of music that was written for a cello, that was written for a violin, a piano. Um, I love that. There's something to that, that that connects me to it in and of itself. So it's not that I don't have a reference or I don't enjoy contemporary music. I just love that. So there's a historical underpinning of that. So I, you know, those are the things that I really love about classical music. Now, what I don't like about it. Some of the things I don't like about classical guitar is it's really, really scary. And some of the people, whether they admit it or not, are very opinionated. Anytime I play something that's a classical piece or attempt to play it, I get all these comments. Oh, you need to play it this way. You're doing it that way. You like that. So you can make the argument that it doesn't give you freedom to do whatever you want to do. It's not improvisation. You are being expected to play a certain way with that. Yes, I know that there's interpretation. Classical musicians talk about, well, the interpretation of this and that like that. But at the end of the day, the notes have to be correct in there. You know, if you're playing Box Boré or Jeju George of Man's Desire, people know what it sounds like, and the next note should follow the other one. There's no such thing as a variation in a, 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 a Boré, unless it's written that way, put it that way. So they're very, very particular about it. They want it to sound the way it was written, and they talk about composer's intent and things like that. That's, I'm not a fan of that, personally speaking. I want to hear it. One of the reasons I love jazz and other types of music is the freedom that it gives you not to have to play the thing the exact same way night in and night out. Unfortunately, with classical music, if you go into a performance, that's what's happening. Okay? You're not going to hear a totally different something. If you heard it differently, they messed up either the night before or tonight. Let's just put it that way. So that's the one thing I don't like about it. And I do know that um, um, in um, um, uh, chamber music and certain types, there were like some improvisation, things of that nature. So that's the one, so, 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 so um, the stuffiness of classical music, regardless of that. And no, I'm not a hipster, and there's stuffiness in jazz as well, like that. But this whole notion of like, um, sometimes I feel like that people that listen to that genre, uh, they're kind of pretentious. Uh, and you can say the same about some jazz people too. There's just some aura. Not everybody. I mean, a lot of my best friends belong to the Classical Guitar Society. I belong to the Boston Classical Guitar Society, right? And you can say I'm pretentious in and of itself. But I think you kind of, it's like just as Stephen said, it's, it's like pornography. I know it when I see it. I know pretension when I see pretension. And there's that little air sometimes with classical musicians and to a certain extent with jazz musicians that, oh, my music, uh, my musical art form is a, of a higher pedigree than your musical art form. And again, I don't want to leave the jazz guys out there. It's like, yeah, you don't understand what a minor seventh flat of fifth is and how to play over changes and what Miles Davis was thinking of when he wrote uh, da, da 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 things like that. So there's that. I'm not a fan of that. I'm a fan of knowing your history, um, you know, reading about uh, the contextually, like how something was written. I just love that stuff. But let's not lecture people on what they should be hearing, listening to it, and what the history of that like that. So that's the other thing about it, um, the era of pretension. Um, the, 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 the third thing about it is that um, I wouldn't say I don't, it, it, it's sort of a little bit of all of the above uh, that a lot of classical musicians really snub other types of music. Okay, I guess you could say that about a lot of jazz musicians. I love musicians who really have big ears and are listening to everything. I started this thing telling you that I got the classical music through punk. I mean, 
I didn't grow up in a family where we listened to Beethoven and Mozart and Stravinsky and Schumann and all that. I didn't even know those names, put it that way. And so you have to be open. And because music to me is for everybody. And so for me uh, f to have a strong musical underpinning, it should be listening to jazz, some funk, some classical, all of the above. A lot of times, um, the stuffy, the stuffier and the stiffer they are in terms of, of, of their musical taste, the less likely they are to embrace other styles of music. And I think sometimes classical music falls under that, that heading, as does jazz. So anyway, very, very long, long video. Apologize for the length of it. I do not edit, so you can either watch all of it if you got this far or not. Practice, practice, practice. Bye now.